party people it's randy i'm here for thunder horse descendant and jesse james today i'm guys i'm so excited to be here so i have a very fun project planned with this guy um and a bunch of other jesse james components but this was kind of <clears throat> the inspiration for this necklace this feather big um red bronze feather from um Jesse James. So I have a, uh, a really fun project planned and I'm super excited. So I hope you guys will come with me. Um, in this video, there is going to be patina painting, FYI, patina paint, quick patina paint. There's seed beads. There's the new Dakota strands, the Jesse James beads, Dakota strand collaboration. Um, there is boho beads and just a whole lot of fun. So I'm super excited. And let's get on into the video. Alrighty, here we are on the mat. These are all the things that we're going to use today. I am so excited. Okay, so we're going to be making a necklace now. If you missed this, um, I recently got permission to do YouTube live videos. So we actually, um, me and some of the community here on YouTube, we designed this. People made their comments. I think, believe it was Miss Karen who said, girl, got to get that patina paint on there. So I got that. She suggested that. So we really had a lot of cool input and it was a really fun time. Um, I don't have a set schedule for lives, but uh, I'm thinking about it. Anyway, I will link that in the description box and in the cards. So if you guys want to see how this design process came to be by all means head over there do that after you're done watching okay here's what we're gonna need i am using these are leftover you may have seen these before my cute little jars these are the 11 toho seed beads from jesse james this one is in um peach sherbet so we had used some of these um on the walk on the beach necklace so we're going to use them on here as well. So I have those. The next thing we're going to use is this bead strand. This one is bead strand in Renaissance, Renaissance Gala. Okay. So I really like this strand a lot. And um, it's got some wood. It's got some um, nice spacers and bead caps which i feel like we're gonna need it's got these cute little rondelles on there crystals and then this boho bead which is actually gonna i'm gonna work that into our focal um but really i really liked these um like macrame knot beads i just feel like they give a lot of texture so i was really excited about that and then coupled together with this strand from um the jesse james dakota stone collaboration this one is i'm gonna have to insert the name of it on the screen because right now i cannot remember the name of it but um so this is this is two strands that i have here this has the z beads and these really amazing um i believe these are carnelian goldstone so they're just really pretty i really love the colorway Okay, and then next we have what? The feather pendant. <clears throat> so this guy's a big guy. I wanna I wanna show you that he's he's pretty big. I mean clearly you can see in my hand he's pretty big, but I wanna give us a little guesstimate here. He's got a curve, but I'd say about four inches. So about four inches. And then up next, uh, we have the crystal amber pair. Uh, you guys, these are great. I was so excited when I got them. Um, cause they have like that paved crystal along the edge. And you know, I like to put some, some sparkly, some sparkle with my stone. So you guys, I'm super excited. Now this came out of the, um, magical mystery bead box from january i think it was january uh and it, i just i found this rogue heart <laughs> red bronze 
I would say these are bronze red. They're they're more red bronze as as is the feather. Um, I don't know if it's coming across on camera that way, but they're more red bronze. And so I'm just using this rogue heart, and I'm going to use that as uh, part of my clasp here. And I mean, this guy's pretty big. You wouldn't have to use a big clip like that, but I had them, so I was like, why not? All right, move this out of the way. Put this and all this in my little bowl here because prior to any of that, we got to do some patina painting. All right, guys, let's get this party started. First things first, before I paint this feather, I am going to bring in the big mama hole punch. I have a three millimeter hole punch in here. Uh, I was going to switch it to two, but I was like, well, three will probably be fine. So, if there's some turbulence here in the video, I apologize in advance because sometimes it's kind of hard to do punching on the video. But what I'm going to do is this part has a loop, so I'm not going to mess around with that. I am just going to punch down here. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm not going to go right on the tippy tip. Sorry, I'm trying to eyeball it here. All right, everybody's going to say a little prayer or send good vibes or whatever you do. And here we go. All right, big mama. Easy peasy. There we go. So I'm going to put that over here. All right, so last time I had done this, I can't remember who had suggested. Oh, I'm going to have to get a little file for that. I don't remember who had suggested, but they said patina paint after you punch the hole. So that's what I did. I got to grab a file. All right, here's my little file set that I have. And I'm just looking which one would probably be best for this situation. I'm thinking probably this guy. So it's just a little file, and I'm just going to... There's just some little Sharpies, is all. And I'm not too worried about, I'm not worried about um, messing this up because we're gonna patina paint it. So I'm not worried about it. I'm just getting the little edgies off. Could even go in and just make sure he's nice and smooth. Backside's pretty good. So you can see right here, I punched basically right at the end of where this line was going. I just punched right there. Turned out what spectacular. And now we will go in with our patina paint. So patina paint, um, I've already shaken these, but give them one last go. Uh, what I have is I have white gold, rose gold, and deep turquoise. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the, the deep turquoise. I just brought it out for kicks and giggles because I might want to put some... Look at this drama. I might want to put some something, little details. The reason I have that is because I don't... I store my how I store my patina paints you should store them right side up but sometimes I throw them in a box that's not always the best idea <laughs> but they still work Put a little gold I know for sure we're gonna use the gold and you just need a little smidge with these patina paints I believe that Jesse James has some patina paints on their website if you're looking for some these are uh, rose gold and gold are some pretty like normal colors that you can find. I'm sure they have some of those on there. Um, 
So let's get to that. I'm going to zoom in. Now, if you've never done any patina painting before, no worries. This is the fun part. So what you do, I'm just going to start out with the gold because let's try a little colors. So here's the gold. Here's the, the rose gold. And then here's the teal. Okay. Well, I kind of had it mixed up, so it's not as dark. Let me try a different clean brush. Okay. So that's what we got. Now, here's the deal. You're like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Don't worry. Don't worry about this. This is the fun part. So if you mess up in, on your patina paint, this is the cool thing about patina paints. You can just go over it with more patina paint and then wipe it off. So here's an example of that. So I put a little on that side. I'm just going to take a tissue and I'm just going to wipe it off. Okay, you see? Now, you can let it dry. But at the at the very end, we are going to I kind of like this pink. I'm going to do I'm going to do a little bit of both. Uh, at the very end, we're going to go over this with the uh, Vintage um, little sander guy thing. So I'm going to take some of this off anyway. Okay. So this is just, this is just what we're doing. You don't have to do this. You could use your feather just how you want it. You do whatever you want. Okay, I'm just going like this here. I'm not doing the whole thing. Uh, up here, I think I'll do a smidge. And then, I am, I think I am going to go in with a little of that, a little bit of that uh, turquoise. Now, if you don't want it to be so dark, because there is no turquoise on this necklace. I just thought that it would be a contrasting, a nice contrasting color. So what I've done now is I've rinsed my brush so it has a little water on it. And I'm just going to go in. I'm going to get a little smidge of that turquoise. And I'm just going to go along the feather portion. And because I've put water, it's going to be lighter. Okay. If you want it darker, just don't put water. Up here, I'm going to put some on this right here. Now, I do tend to stay away from the hook portion. I might do a little on the top, kind of like a fade. Because if this does get wear because of where you have it or whatever, you know, the deal is, uh, you don't want it to wear your patina paints off and then that looks funny. So I just don't put anything over there. So now I'm going to get my Vintage Buffer. Okay, here's the, the little Vintage Buffer. So now, this stuff doesn't take very much time to dry at all. Honestly, I want to go in here with a little smidge of gold because I want this to kind of be looking like a line of the teal, you know? So, you can just get in them little grooves there. And like I said, if you don't feel comfortable doing that with your feather, you don't have to do that. I just like to play around with the components. So now, she should be pretty well dried up. I mean, this tough is really quick. And it feels like it is. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my Vintage Buffer. This has different grains on it. And I'm going to start with a light grain. So I'll probably start on the smooth back side. And I'm just going in here and I'm just sanding. Let me zoom you out so you're not getting dizzy. There's going to be noise, so uh, turn your volume down if you need to.
no aisle. Okay, so I also have a, just a little piece of sandpaper, and you can you can use that to get in some of the grooves if you want to. Okay, I'm just gonna give this little edge a little something here. until you're absolutely happy with it and just following the groove and I'm pretty happy with it all right zoom in so you can see that's what she looks like I am ready to move on to the next portion of our necklace. Okay guys, I've cut apart the Renaissance Gala strand. I'm going to use this boho bead to go with our um, pendant situation here. Put these to the side. So what I'm going to do is I am, well, I've already started this one. Uh, I just made a rosette, but I will show you how to do that. We are going to be using 22 gauge artistic wire. We're just going to wire wrap these together. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start with the bottom one, which is going to be the crystal. I'm going to make myself a little rosette here. Let me zoom you in. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start at the tippy tip of the wire. I'm going to go around. When I see the wire come back, that's one, two. I'm going to straighten it completely out so it's up and down. Take it off there, flip it over, bring the tail back through the little spiral that you made, pull that down. So now I'm going to do here, since this is going to be the very bottom of our necklace, I am going to just straighten this out, make sure that this little tail is all tucked in, which it looks like it is, and then I'm just going to add the crystal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wire wrap loop on the top. So I'm going to leave myself a little space. Uh, I don't want my loop to be too big because I don't want it to take away from the crystal. So I made it fairly small. You can see where I am on my plier here. And then I just chop that off. And get this all tucked in. All right, so we have started the veeding. So here's our pendant. Now what I'm going to do on the other side is instead of making a rosette, I'm going to make a wire wrap loop. And I'm going to first attach this one we just made so they are connected. And I'm going to go in here with my chain nose and I'm going to just grab a hold of that loop there and start wrapping. And give him a trim. Okay. 
and now we can add our boho bead. So I'll just add him onto this wire here. <clears throat> Pull him down nice and stuck. Now before I do any wrapping, I'm going to be attaching him to this feather right here. Um, on this link, there's going to be three items on this hole that we made, the three millimeter hole. There's going to be this pendant, and then there's going to be two strands of beads coming off of here. So I'm debating, I, I don't think I want to wire wrap straight to that. I think I want to hang with a jump ring simply because then this will that will give it more movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And since I'm going to hang with a jump ring, I don't have to make a very big loop. Alrighty, since making sure everything is straightened out there. Mm-hmm. Looks good. So these two loops should be going the front of the loop. You see, so if you're going to run a string through it, <clears throat> we're holding like this. If you were going to run a string through it, you should be able to run your string this way. Same on the bottom. That's how your loop should be facing. This one should be facing. So you would put your string to the back. You see there, front to back. This one side to side. So there's that. Now. Before I start uh, connecting that, I gotta have a jump ring. So I'm thinking I wanna use an oval jump ring for this. Cause you know, if you've been here for any amount of time, you know, Randy loves a good oval jump ring. <laughs> I do have a large, uh, looks like an eight millimeter uh, gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And I'm just gonna attach them to the feather. Just like so. Close him back up. I'm going to make sure that closure is facing towards the back instead of the front. Yep. There we go. All right. He's on there. Okay. Now for the stringing. The next portion that I think we'll do is this portion. We'll just finish up this side here. So I'm going to get some wire and I'm going to cut for about, we said this was about four inches. So five inches um, for this portion here, five inches of beading. You could do six inches if you wanted a little longer one. Uh, five inches is gonna give you about an 18 inch necklace. Six inches is gonna give you about a 20 inch necklace. Um, depending on if you're going to use an extender or not. I don't plan to use an extender. I'm just going to use this. Um, so I might do, but I'm still going to try to do the five inches. So that means the next thing that we got to do is we got to look at the bead situation. So I am going to cut these off. Now, Mm -hmm. I'm just cutting these bead strands here. 
I'm actually going to save that one for the other side. Um, I think what I will do is I want to put the heavier stones up here on the top because uh, for weight purposes. Um, not that this is very heavy, but there is going to be two strands on the other side and I might need need that to even it out. Um, so I am going to use these beads up here on the other side, but I'm going to swap some of them out because um, we need this to all, you know, work together. So that should be good. I'm just thinking if I wanted to add any more metal on this side, but I don't really, I don't think. So this is what we got. I'm going to put this back into... back into here. So here's what the strand looked like originally. I moved, just so you know, um, I moved this one and that one and put it for the other side. And in its place, I put this. And then I left all of these. And then I went down here and I took crystal, two crystals, the Z bead, the spacer, and the um, gold stone. And I took those and I added them to the other side. And in that place, I put, um, I put this. So if you're trying to make this and you're keeping track of what's going on, that's what I did. I left the rest of it. So now the beads are kind of mixed up a little bit. And we can get to stringing. So I am going to be using some medium soft flex. And I'm going to cut myself a little piece of that. We said, um, I need five inches of beading, so I got about six and a half inches to a lot for crimping and whatever. I'll put a few of them down there. Okay, so I got the size two crimp tubes. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start. On this side. So... I'm going to start this by putting on... One side my crimp tube and running the other wire through the crimp tube and then only pulling on one side. So I'll get a little loop like this. Easy peasy. And then I'm just going to make sure these are not twisted in there. And I am gonna I'm gonna leave it kind of loose, kind of a bigger loop because I want it to be able to move. Uh, so I'm not gonna make it super tight. I'm gonna go in and do the crimping. There's going to be a few episodes of crimping in this video. All right, pull test. Now you're welcome to use a bead cap if you'd like. I don't know if I'm going to, but that's what I got so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start stringing. And let me zoom you out so you can see. I, I had set this up. I'm going to start over here at this end. So the Z bead is down closest to the feather. And see how that sits in there. Oh, yeah. It's good. Fine. And put this guy on there. Give this guy a little trim here. Thank you. 
dropped him. That one's kind of smaller. I'm going to put that one towards the top. So I'm putting these on there, but we also have to keep in mind, we said we only needed about five to six inches of beadwork here. Let's see what we get. I'm struggling with this one. There it goes. I feel like I should have a spacer in here. I'm going to grab out one of these little rondelle little spacer. Okay, so I'm just going to measure to see how much we got here. Yeah, it's about five and a half. Closer to six, which is not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this square one. Put him back in the other side. So now I'm going to attach my clip. Heart my heart because this has a little bit of space in it as well which will actually probably uh, make it a little bit longer but that's fine so crimp bead heart toggle back through the crimp bead tube into a bead And then just going to pull that. Okay, and then again, I want it to be tight, but not so tight that my beads can't move. And we're crimping. Sorry, that weight is making it spin around, so it might have been kind of hard to see. Did the pull test, everything looks good. And give it a snip. All right, so here's what we have for, we'll call this side A. For side A, this is what we got thus far. So this top part, is good to go. Okay, now we start on the other side. So there's going to be two strands over here. So let's just measure this and see what exactly we're working with here. So, the whole thing to the end of the feather is 10 inches. So, it is going to be 20 inches. That's including the clasp. So, we are then going to want to do a... Twenty inches. So ten. We want to do ten inches for one strand. 
So I'm going to cut 11. That's going to be for our crimping endeavors. So we got one 11 inch strand. And then we're also going to want to do one 12 inch strand, but I'm going to cut 13 inches to accommodate for crimping. So we'll have one on the outside and one on the inside. So we got uh, 10 and 12. But really, we have 11 and 13. All righty. This clasp is going to give us, I mean, this is a pretty big clasp, so it's going to give us a little space as well. So I'm not worried um, about the size of the necklace. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start out with our beads. So we got this one. And what I'm going to do here is the same thing that I did on the other side where I'm going to replace this crystal with this little set of, of uh, that little unit. I'll make a timestamp so you can go back and see which ones I took out. Um, and then I'm also going to do the same on this side where I took these two and I at first was gonna replace with this square, but there was enough room on that side, but I am gonna do that now. And then also I put a raw the rondelle spacer up here so i'm going to move that down to this end okay so we have that and then these are the rest of our beads and i do want to take out because we got to add this in our crystal i'm going to put him hmm, am i going to put him there or am i going to put him here I think I'm going to put them there. I'm going to add this to my stack. And I'm going to take one of the... Oop. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> one of these guys with the bead caps. And I am going to put him on this side. And I'm going to pull out... This stone here. And I'm going to put him right there. So now um, there's more evenly spaced beads throughout from both strands. I mean, you could go through and you could pick, you know, pick out the exact ones you want and split them all up and, you know, do whatever you want to do. To me, this is going to work out because this one, we're going to start both of these strands at the same time. This one is going to be um, the shorter strand. This one's going to be the longer strand. And then... We're going to bead those on and whatever space that we have left, we're going to fill with some seed beads. And that's going to be up more up towards the neck. But I want to get these guys on there because uh, these are our focal beads, right? So I'm going to start with the short strand. And I'm just going to string that through here. Oh. Need some crimp tubes? Crimp tubes! Put those up there. <clears throat> okay, crimp tubes, here we go. Oh, that's a beat. Crimp tubes, here we go. <laughs> no, nope, not that one. That one says it has... other things to do. All right. So same process here. Okay. 
and we're crimping. Everything looks good. Gonna go with the long one as well. So right here, I am placing this one. This one is gonna be the top strand, so I'm gonna put that on the top. When I go in strand this one, I'm gonna put it in the middle between the top strand and this and the dangly bits. <laughs> and I'm gonna put him in the middle like so. And this is just to help everything kind of hang straight the way it's supposed to. So that is important to note. And then get him in there. test and we're good to go okay so I'm just gonna kind of move this up here so you guys can see what I'm doing so uh, for the first strand I'm gonna strand this up and we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it You know what I want to move these I don't like how they're looking right there with all that so I'm gonna move these to the back and I'm gonna move these to the front so again starting with the Z bead and you can do your beads any way you say see fit if you got a cool design idea by all means do that I am just doing what I feel like because no rules and put on the crystal mm -hmm. and Let's see here. Now we're just doing a little strain. Zoom me out. Um. All right, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a beat stopper if I can find one. I'm going to put a bead stopper on here for right now. Okay. And right here, I do not want to detract from this crystal. So I'm going to put some smaller beads that we have right here. Uh, I'm just going to string these.
Hmm. I didn't notice that these goldstone are wide hole beads. You could use those on leather. That is kind of cool. So I'm just kind of going until I'm past this crystal here with the smaller of the beads. I mean, not completely small, but just so you can get past there a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and start adding the stones. The Z beads. And at this point, I'm just doing what I want. The square on there. I hope those didn't end up in the same place. They kind of did, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add this bunch a little later. Okay, so I had a couple extra beads, and I think what I'll do is I'm going to add those over here on this side for a little more length on that one. Okay, I don't mind that they're not the exact same. If you want to make them the exact same, go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add seed beads to these anyways. So I'm going to pop off camera, add the seed beads, and then we'll finish it up. All right, guys. We're almost done. I got my seed beads on. So I ended up using just one color. I was going to use two colors, but I was like, there's already a lot going on here. <laughs> so I just used, um, I used 45 beads on each side. It just happened to work out that way. And I did add a, uh, two Chinese crystals at the top just so I could have a bead to go back through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this outside one, the longer one. And I am going to just connect right onto my lobster claw here. Now, if you wanted to have a little more control over this, you could connect to a, oh, I gotta have a bead here. You could connect to a jump ring. Uh, that's completely up to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Completely, completely up to you. Alrighty. So I didn't leave myself very much tail here, but you know, things and stuff. Well guys, I had to take some seed beads off. I lifted it up and I <laughs> dropped it. So, but anyway, I took off some seed beads. It's still fine. I just reconnected to the lobster claw, same way as we did before. But anyways, here she is, all done up. Ooh, whoops. So there she is, all completely done. 
my phone's about to die <laughs> i will get you guys some video and some photos like i normally do thank you for hanging out today thanks for supporting me please uh subscribe to my videos give this video a thumbs up a like a comment a share and uh i'll see you guys next time have a wonderful day bye